Hey, Deborah. Hi, Mr. Cabot. Cabot. Oh, thank you so much. Let me get my. Now I see you. Yes, yeah, so the, the, the sun at your back. Uh, it's such a pleasure to meet you. You've interviewed so, so many people. Of all the people that you've interviewed, who do you think was the funniest? Who wasn't necessarily known for being a comedian? That's a very interesting question, which I would give anything to have an answer for. <laughs> How long do I have to uh, think back? Well, if you give me that? contact information, I'll be happy to contact you afterwards. A lot of people were funny that I didn't expect to meet. Um, Robert Mitchum. Mm. Really? I, I loved Mitchum. He was just the greatest company, best person to talk to, one of the smartest men in the business. You couldn't name any aspect of literature or poetry that he hadn't read. Wow. And I had to pry teeth out of him to get him to admit that he wrote poetry. <laughs> and an oratorio that was performed in Hollywood Bowl. Robert Mitchum from Cape Fear. That is amazing. And wow. talked to Polly Bergen about that stunning near last scene in Cape Fear. Yes. Where yes. naked to the waist up, of course, he comes toward her and she said, I knew I was going to. She said, she had said, I remember seeing an interview saying she truly, really was afraid. She was going to be killed. Yeah, exactly. Uh, may I ask you, sir, how does one con contact you for a 10-minute interview? Yes? Okay, and then oh, I'll... With great luck and good fortune. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. Okay, well, uh, uh, my... Martha, my wife, of course. Great, and uh, he'll continue to interview while well, This is uh, our wonderful assistant. So I will do that. I would love to talk to you. Mr. Further. Cabot, um, I'm sure you know, being here, how overwhelming the, the nostalgia for classic Hollywood is and yeah, how much people yeah. love it. I, I roll uh, in it. I know you do. You're a part of it. Uh, how do you think it compares to when you were giving your famous interviews of Catherine Hepper and Alfred Hitchcock and all those legends? How do you think the enthusiasm of classic Hollywood now compares to then? Is it... Is it the same? Is it I have the difference? slightest idea because I don't have any critical sense. Uh -huh. People think I have an analytical mind. And I, don't, <laughs> I would give anything to be able to answer such an intelligent question. <laughs> is this a sneaky way of, of getting out of it? But, uh, yeah, nostalgia is uh, a delicious thing if yes. it's done right. Otherwise, it makes you sick. Um, <laughs> but I, 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 I do like to roll in it. Yeah. I think of, um, for some reason, I, I think of, of, of Laurel and Hardy, the first two people who thrilled me as a kid in the movies, and how I later in life never dreamed I would meet Stan Laurel. It was as if I met Donald Duck, or so he, couldn't, he didn't, couldn't exist in the real world. Uh, and that, that was a Hollywood nostalgia thrill. Yeah. I, I like it. Yeah. You're a part of it, and uh, your interviews with all those great stars was so educational and thrilling oh, for me. Thank so thank you so much for doing what you did. You're, you're a real hero. Let my wife mention something. I'm sorry, I do have to mention something. I agree with you that his interviews with those people are really such a treasure trove. They really are. They really are. They give us such insight. And he's a hero for the fact that we have them because when he started on ABC, that was back in, in the late 60s when people thought of television as a performance uh, right. medium. And so, yeah. it, as you would go on stage and then go off, and then that's the end of it, that's how they thought of TV. And so, every morning, he would tape a show and they would play it on ABC, and in the afternoon, they would tape over it for Let's Make a Deal. No. Interesting. Wow. wow. So, yeah, it, it, he, when he found out about, about that, that, he said, excuse me. No, that's not going to work. It's Lucille Ball and Groucho Marx and all these you know, stunning people. And they said, well, but then you have to understand these are two-inch tapes. They have a lot of silver on them. They cost a lot of money. They cost $65 a piece <laughs> back in the 60s. Yeah. yeah. And he said, I'll pay for them. I'm oh, my right. goodness. Wow. Thank you, sir. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Can you imagine Lucille Ball saying, I'm worth $65? <laughs> Good point. Thank With you, a few sir. dirty words. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Kent. Thank you, and don't miss me in Beetlejuice. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Kent. And I'll see you tomorrow for Mark's brothers. Speaking of Laurel No, that was 